Good morning everyone welcome to my channel so today's prompt is uh, nature so I'm going to do some watercolors and I want to make little snippets of things that I can add to my uh, journal um, I might even just add some random pieces of um, <clears throat> watercolor paper that um, has just color on it so that if I use something that needs a little bit extra pop of color i've got some random little pieces with me so all i've done at the moment is just um got myself some watercolor paper it's not expensive paper it's just from the two dollar shop and i've rough torn down the sides so that um it's sort of in keeping with the work we do in our journals where we often just tear paper i've found my paints i haven't used them for quite some time um, so I've dragged them out. Now these paints, I really like them because they've got a lot of pigment in them. So they're strong. I've got um, different ones like I think they're Windsor and Newton from memory is the brand. Very soft and um, gentle colours. You, you get the whole spectrum, but very gentle. These ones here are just really cool. The um, They're called Kohenor. Um, I believe they're on Amazon. I bought them in an art supply place a few years ago before Amazon was around. And I paid a fortune for them. But now when I look on Amazon, they're actually not too bad. So uh, if you did want to pick some up, they're really, really cool. I've actually got three sets here, three different sets. I can't remember the exact... I'll leave that there for a moment so you can jot that down. I can't remember the exact sets and what goes with what, but... Pretty much you get all sorts of different color palettes and you can screw them on top of each other to create, you know, whatever you sort of want. So if you were traveling, it's perfect because you can um, yeah, build a little set of the colors that are, you know, ones that you'd sort of like to use on your journey. So you're not carrying too much is what I'm trying to say. So I've got some... Um, um, paper towel as well just to dab my brush if I so need the other thing I like about these is the lid is a little palette in itself so you're sort of very um, self-contained so I'm just trying to get myself in shot here what I want to try and paint <clears throat> is a dragonfly so I'm just going to put a bit of water in my little palette here there's a little bit of um, pink paint left from a previous experience. And I'm just going to use this very diluted pink to um, sketch out the wings of my butterfly and then come back and drop some more colour in. So I sort of want to make him very wispy. And then I get my pinks. Where's the pink? Activate that. It might be very pink. That's not too bad. And because I've put a little bit of water on my page already, I can get this gorgeous soft wing happening. Now I'll do the second wing. It's sort of going to be just, just there. And just then come back and drop the color into my dragonfly. These are so simple to paint. It's literally just a swish of the brush. Now I'm just taking off any excess water. All right with a dab of my paper towel and that's it so far now we might drop in another color might look for a little bit of purple I'm just around whoops that's a lot of purple but that's okay that's the beauty of watercolors is it doesn't have to be um, you know precise there's a lot of give in watercolour. That's it. Now I might 
just for fun. We might drop in a little bit of blue down here. These are just great to have a real play with. So that's it. The thing with watercolour is to stop. So all I've done is just dropped in a, a hint of a big um, wing and then a hint of a little wing. Now Mr. Dragonfly is coming into land, so we need now a body, which I pick a similar colour that we've been using. I might just use this blue. It's very dark. It's like an indigo, but that's all right. And we're going to attempt to do his body. Do a straight line, tapering it off at the end, and then come back and then just build it up with a hint of color and his head and his little body. And that's it. Don't go overboard with the painting of the shape. You're just doing the hint of the body. Remember, he's hovering, he's moving, he's coming into land. So there's all this movement happening. It does look like a chicken coming into land, but. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just going to take some excess paint off now and that'll help also add a little extra tone to his body. You can see that really simple, just a little wispy dragonfly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give dragonfly somewhere as if he's coming into <clears throat> land on maybe some water or something. So I'll find some blues. And I'm just going to wet the surface below him and then pick up a little bit of blue and just drop that in. It's just a hint of water. That's it. Ow. Just knocked my paint brushes everywhere. This is where it can go wrong so bad. <laughs> Might put a bit of green in that water. This might be one of those times where I should just stop, but I'm not. <clears throat> I'm gonna <laughs> activate another color and just drop a little bit of green in there. Lovely. Okay, then we're going to let, we're going to tear that off. It's like a postage stamp. And we're going to let him dry. I might now extend that water because now that I've got, and I can just drag out the paint that I've got there because I've got heaps. I just drop in a little bit of green over here. Okay, so we'll let him dry and then we'll come back to him with a black pen and put in some detail. So let's do another one. <clears throat> let's do, I'm just getting my water now that's got a hint of pink in it. Might do a pinky looking one more so. I'm just popping down on the paper. By, by doing this really translucent first um, coat of, of uh, colour, it's, what's, what's the word? It softens up the paper so that it's really good at absorbing water. Plus, it gives you a chance to have a little slush around. I might bring some orange into this one. Oh, red. Red and orange. We'll, we'll do both. Um, it gives you a chance to sort of see where your wing might end up. I 
and I'll just do a little bit of red. So I'm sort of doing three colors. So I'll just pick up a bit of moisture in there just to back that down a bit. I want a little bit more red down, down where the wing meets the body should be your darkest color. So that's what you should be aiming to do to have the, the lighter colors leading down to the darker colors. It'll just make it look like the little wing is sort of going somewhere. So I'm just gonna do some wispy little hints of the second wing. Most of the color is in the first one. Just pick up that paint that's there, the excess, because it's only meant to be just a, a, a flicker, a flicker of his wing. You see that? How simple. Just really simple. You've got this tear shaped and then just a hint of colour behind his uh, shoulder on the other side. Now we're going to do his body and we'll find one of those darker colours. I might just do like a brown this time. And just do a wispy line, <clears throat> starting just past his wing, dragging his body up into the air and ending in a little dot, a little little um, wispy bit. What am I trying to say? His tail, just thin. And then come back and dab in some colour to thicken up that line to create, oh, not even on camera, goodness me. To create the the body of your now see my brown has caught been caught up in the pink it's not a big problem you just gotta soak up the brown and let that area dry so that you can come back and um, sort of fiddle around there to maybe Get rid of the bleed that's happened between the two areas. <clears throat> that's not, not a problem. Even the fact that they've bled, I don't mind it. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just try and pick up a little bit more of that brown as it's sneaking into, into it. That's it. Let that dry. So, and we'll give him a little bit of water. Where's my blues? And then maybe a touch of that green again. Oh gosh, look how strong that is. Well, this dragonfly's not going as predicted. But just dab it away. And just make it retreat. And then to really dab it away, drag it down that dark colour. So that it really softens it. Add a little bit of green in there. <clears throat> and then give it another dab. So you can easily get rid of pigment from your picture. I don't like how my brown has bled there, but that's okay. When that dries, we'll be able to come back in there with some more color. I'm just gonna dampen it again. Give it another dab just to help it back back away and then I'm just going to bring in a little bit of pink again just to give it a pop of there we go okay so there's our little dragonfly so when we come back with the pen I think my first one might be dry enough now yep it is all we're going to do now <coughs> is we're going to pop some little legs on little dragonfly. Little 
eye there is coming in and we're just sort of going to do some little lines up his tail to give the impression that there's something happening and his little wing just a few little little lines through it the black really helps your piece come alive there we go and that's it just a simple little sketchy watercolor now that I'm just going to pop in my journal and I can, I'm only going to sketch in a little bit of black in that water. I can tear that down even more and then pop him on my um, artwork, whatever page I'm working on. So I'll just have some random dragonflies with me. This little guy here, I'm just not digging him. See how that brown has bled? You've really got to let watercolour <clears throat> have its own space because the paper between the wing and the body on that guy, he, um, it's not wet, so the watercolour will stay exactly where you want it to stay. But if that was damp like that, it just has crossed over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reject Dragonfly and I'm just going to tear that off. Unfortunately, this paper is plain on the back. Some of them you can buy that it's um, got watercolour paper front and back. So that's no good to paint on. Well, you could, but it's not real good. <clears throat> I'm just going to, using this guy's my inspiration, I'm just going to do some little um, paint splotches, like a, you know, the paint palette. And then I've got some of these little fellows with me as well. That's it. A lot of fun. And because I've got my paints activated, I might as well use them up. They're sitting there wet looking. They're sort of fun to have in your bits and pieces that you're taking with you in your journal. But I'm sure you all know all this. Okay. Just a little element that can be popped in with my bits and pieces. Let's have another go at a dragonfly. Okay, let's get my water and get this wing happening. Let's get some colour. Let's get another bit of orange happening here. Oh, I love how watercolour runs. It's just so much fun to play with. Don't be afraid of them. Get them out. Or get yourself a little set. Because they are super, super cool. And dragonflies are so easy to do. As long as you don't let the body bleed <coughs> into him. A bit of pink up through there. Pretty little dragonfly, this guy. Okay, let's have a go at this body again. I think the paintbrush was a little bit too thick I used before. Let's get that body. There he is, and his tail, nice and flicky. 
That's better. And then just fatten up his body a little bit, his little head. That's all you need. <clears throat> Heaps better. Now I'm getting him. And then we'll just pop a hint of blue as he's coming into the water. Just a little bit and a little bit of that green. Okay, yeah, happier with him, that little guy. I might just dab a bit of that excess water. If you leave, <clears throat> oh, I keep having to clear my throat. It just is not leaving me this COVID. Well, it's left, but it's lingering. Um, if you dab it with the paper towel and get rid of bubbles, you can see on his body, there's a bubble. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think you can. See how it's wet and shiny? Yeah, now you can. See down the bottom of the screen, it's wet and shiny. That's a bubble of paint water, and it's too much. It will dry and leave a really hard edge. <clears throat> like, you'll, you'll know the difference um, if you were to, let's see. Um, I was fiddling around with paints just to make sure they were working. And there's no bubbles there. Yeah, you can see it where it was too much water. On that edge there, it's very sharp. It's not soft and bleeding. That's too much paint compared to here. See how it's just soft and delicate? That's perfect for watercolour. That's too much ink over here. It's very harsh. <clears throat> You'll When you look at watercolour um, watercolor pictures, there's no harsh lines anywhere. It's very um, fluid looking. And if you leave bubbles of water, you'll get that harsh line. Okay, so we'll leave this little guy for now. Now the other thing I wanted to have a go at painting, oops, is, um, Oops, 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 oops. I should have prepared earlier. I wanted to have a go at painting a, a cherry blossom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a pencil. I've got a snippet from this um, uh, piece of decorating fodder that I'd found for um, some projects to do with Japan. So I'm just going to sketch a, a rough line of um, a flower. <clears throat> and we'll see if we can paint ourselves a cherry blossom or two. I'm just getting a, a bit of a rough, more so, <clears throat> not so much the flower itself and how it's going to look. It's more to do with just getting my proportions of where I want things to go. So that's probably the reason I do a bit of a sketch. Otherwise, you'll end up, you might back yourself into a corner and you probably can't even see I've got a little bit close to me because I can't see myself. So I'm sort of just giving myself a bit of a, a rough area where things might sit my flower. Okay, all right, so now we need to find ourselves a pink. I might just grab a scrap of paper and activate the space with a little bit of this pink water. Add a little bit more pink in. I think that's too pink. That one's better. 
and just drop into those petals. Some of this pink and that's it. That's the tiniest amount. I know it doesn't look very exciting, <clears throat> but that's the love of watercolors is that you don't have to shape. Let's get a bit of this pink into this guy. A little bit of dark pink through the center of that flower because it's always darkest in the center. So I'll just start dropping in a little bit extra pink in around those regions. These little buds, there's probably enough pink in that little bit of water to really give the hint of a flower. A little bit of pink there, a little bit of pink there. Grab my dobber because I can see bubbles of water happening. So we'll just get rid of those. But the paper now is damp. So we can come back now with... <clears throat> so that's it so far. Just a hint. Let's add little bit more pink at the on that one a little bit more in there beautiful okay now we need to find the brown. Get rid of some of these paints out of my way so I can bring my brown in. And we're just gonna start with a bit of water in my palette here. Pick up the brown, which I think, no, that's purple. That would have been disappointing. Yeah, that's the brown. A little bit in the water so I can sort of see where it is and then just start dropping in a bit of paint where this branch might come through to connect up all these little flowers. Being careful not to let the branch meet the flower. because the flower might be still wet with the pink. That's it. That's all it needs is just a, a hint. And I'm just gonna let the brown now just bleed into the bottom of that flower just a little bit. <clears throat> sort of where the flower meets the branch. Okay, I do have a little bit of moisture sitting there that I want to get rid of. So maybe there. Okay, so now I'm going to come back with more pink and just drop it in the center to start building up the intensity Bring it a little bit more punch. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to stop at that because I'm going to come back with my black pen and do some highlight lines. So let's have a look at Mr. Dragonfly while that dries. And we'll sketch in his body. We're going to make this little pointy tail and down it comes, a bit of a body. He's going to have a couple little legs coming off of him. A bit of a squiggle here and a squiggle there for his body. 
helps show movement a little squiggle on the water and that's it really simple little dragonflies and i can pop them in my journal ready to go i've got my paint swatch is the word i was looking for and i'm just going to draw around that with some lines <clears throat> Now I'll probably pop into my kit when I do pack this journal to go, some of these palettes and a paintbrush, even if I don't use them in the journal, to have a, a few paints with you is a really fun thing to do. When you're just sitting around, there we go. So I've got my two dragonflies, my paint swatch, and my cherry blossom, which that needs to dry a little. No, if I go in there with a the pen, I'm going to ruin it. So I'm gonna stop the video for a second, just let this dry for 10 minutes, and then I'll be back and we'll sketch in the um, um, flowers and I'll clean up my little mess while I do that so I'll be back in a minute okay I'm back and my little flower is dry so I'm just now going to um, rough sketch in the a few little details of the flower so I don't want to do too much drawing of things I just want to give the hint of something happening in the center of that flower is all these little stamens that come out with little pollen heads on. So we're gonna just do a bit of a sketch of those. Just keep it loose, as they say, <clears throat> and put a little highlight through your sketch with your black pen some little stamens in there like cherry blossoms are fantastic to draw because they are little little funny little flowers And you can sort of do a few squiggles and it looks like a cherry blossom. That's what I think. There we go. One little cherry blossom sprig. There you go. So we've got just some random little elements that we can throw into our journal that if we do a page that we need a pop of colour or something random. <clears throat> You know, we've got some bits and pieces with us, but I would probably take my paint with me and at least two paint brushes, a really fine one and um, uh, a, a, a me not a medium, probably just under a medium size paintbrush. There would be a size on it. Let me just grab them again and just tell you that. <clears throat> just in case you decide to do a little bit of painting, I used a two and I used a four, a round four, and a, um, a script two is what is on the paintbrush. Okay, I'll leave it at that, and I hope you enjoyed that video. Just a little bit of mucking around with a little bit of nature today. Okay, thanks. Bye.